Sir Snippets is generously sponsored, by, generously sponsored by the Saka family and as well by Ayala and Avram Foreman. We are on the bracha of Alam al Shinim and last left off with the authorship, the author of Alam al Shinim and Chazal, when Gamliel II, after the Churban, when the Sanhedrin was in Yavna, had to identify and recruit someone who would author this new bracha. He chose Shmuel HaKatan because Shmuel HaKatan was distinguished. The Mishnah Pirkei tells us that he lived by what is a Pasuk in Mishlah, yet it is associated with him. He was able to emotionally detach himself from the situation. So even with the downfall of an enemy, he didn't, over, he didn't feel a sense of joy because he, for him it was a matter of business. It was a matter of policy. It wasn't personal. And if there was anyone who was going to be qualified to author a bracha, which you understand how high the stakes are, Vala Mashinim at its core, we'll speak about in a moment, is also about our enemies from without. But primarily, centrally, it's about our enemies from within. Vala Mashinim is authored about fellow Jews. Who could be entrusted with no bias? Who could be entrusted with no ulterior motive? Who could be entrusted with a pure intent to author a bracha with the hope for the downfall and demise of a fellow Jew, even if that fellow Jew were dangerous and threatening. It was only someone whose motto in life he lived by, someone who was able to make it business, not something which is personal. The Briskarav tells us, points to the Gemara in Sanhedrin Daf Yud Aleph, that once they were sitting and a Basco came in Shemaim and said, among you is someone who's worthy of divine inspiration. But the generation's not worthy, even though the individual is so distinguished and worthy, but the generation is unworthy. All eyes turn to Shmuel HaKotten. Who could the Basco be talking about? Who is so worthy, who is so pure, who is so high, who is so great? None other than Shmuel HaKotten. He was the one worthy of Ruach HaKodesh, the generation wasn't worthy. So when it came time to find somebody who would author with Ruach HaKodesh, it was none other than Shmuel HaKatan. HaKatan certainly was a gadol. He was, as we spoke about, the age of majority, but he remained a katan in terms of the purity. And we see from here, some of the Mepharshim and the Siddur point out that in this bracha of we say every day, three times a day, is a little bit of a musar shmuz to ourselves. Vala Mashinim is a tefillah, and it's also a maimer of Musr, because it took a Shmuel HaKatan. Before we take on anyone else, before we are hypercritical, or before we seek to marginalize, or cancel, or call someone a min, a person has to have that level of purity of intent, with no ulterior motive and no bias, like a Shmuel HaKatan. That means to say, no matter how great a Gadol, no matter how great someone sees themselves, you have to be a Katan, in order to be able to take a position like writing a Vala Mashinim. You have to be a katan, you have to have that sense of purity, that sense of innocence, that sense of lishma, of being purely for the right intent. So what is the kavana? Vala Mashinim. Who are we talking about? By the way, maybe that's why also this is the only bracha on the Amidah that begins with a vav. We'll come back to it in a moment. Vila Mashinim. And we were all taught as children, you don't start a sentence with the word and. and. Welcome back. Vila Mashinim, Vav. The only bracha on the Amidah that begins with the letter Vav. We'll give another reason in a moment, but it occurs to me, maybe the one bracha that was authored 500 years after Anshay Knesset Agadola, the one bracha that was so brazenly written and inserted as an addendum later, is Vav, V. It's a continuation of the Anshay Knesset Agadola. We weren't trying to innovate. We weren't trying to radically change anything, pioneer something new. Vila Mashinim, the Vav is a continuation. The other Pshat, they say the Vila Mashinim is because what's the bracha that precedes Vila Mashinim? Hashiva Shavtainu, the Sanhedrin, the return of the Sanhedrin. So therefore, they go together, they're hand in hand. The restoration of the Sanhedrin, then it'll be the end of tormentors of, the, of Kla Yisrael. When we have a San- Sanhedrin, then we can daven Vila Mashinim al Tisikva. So, different explanations of what the Vav is about. But who are we thinking about? Say the bracha v'la mashinim. And we're wishing, we're davening for pretty harsh things. Alti sikva, they should have no hope. V'chol arisha karega toveid, and all their wickedness should immediately be eliminated, decimated. V'chol ha'ivecha meheri yikareisu, and all the enemies of our people should be swiftly cut off. Hazedim meheri sa'aker, and uproot and crush and rout out and subdue 
all of the all the zaydim, all of those mezidim, the sachniya b'meir of yamin. These are pretty harsh things that we want. Who are we thinking about? What's our intent? So certainly, the simple explanation of Alam is the minim, the original reason, motivation for the authorship of this bracha, which are the heretics. So we'll see next week, I guess. That means heretics of our time. We live in a community that has 180,000 Jews, 92% of whom might halachically, technically qualify as not living lives that would be ala tzaddikim. They might be in Valam Ashinim. Is that we're davening for them? Khalila, terrible things to happen to them? Does it mean today's, today's non observant Jew, today's atheist agnostic Jew? Is that who we're thinking about? That was the original intent. We're heretics. We're tzedukim, karaim, we're the baisusim, we're those who were seeking to undermine and corrupt our Masora and the Masora community, and we davened that they be thwarted and stopped. Is that who we're thinking about? So I'll end tonight with Rabbi Yenis and Ibshitz and his Yaros Dvash. He writes the following quote Yasima libo shi neker minos mi Israel, Yishu ma minim betur shibachsav shibape muna bolidofi. We're davening. We're davening. What would the Jewish world look like? We're seeing it a little bit. I just got back this morning from Israel again. People putting on tefillin, putting on tzitzis. Unbelievable. I was talking to a Jew, a holy Jew, Shuva Junction, our friend Dror. He's got an earring and his tzitzis flying out. I said, When did you start wearing tzitzis? And uh, he was telling me that when he drives on Shabbos to give the food to soldiers, he doesn't wear his tzitzis because he's driving on Shabbos. I said, what is one thing after, until you keep Shabbos, it means you should neglect the mitzvah, well, where the tzitzis then, then too, but there's this awakening. So that's what we're davening for, Yonah Sanayim should says, for a spiritual awakening that all Jews will believe in and observe and surrender, Torah Shabbat Sav, Torah Shabbat Peh, Beli Dofi. We should live in a generation that is amunas chachamim, that we defer to the Gedola Yisrael, that we trust their leadership, their judgment, their direction, that we surrender our das to their das. Says You should be thinking about Hamas. You should be thinking about Hezbollah. You should even be thinking about Jews who describe themselves as Shomer Yisrael but do exactly the, don't daven about him, but daven that Jews should have their heads screwed on straight to be a true Shomer Yisrael and to stand up for the Jewish people. Says Rabbi Yenison, I have this bracha you're davening for the destruction of Amalek. Umalchus zadon shu Amalek, sheba bezadon ha Yisrael, misabar ariv lo lo, vizem mekai mitzvah saseh zachar es asher salach Amalek. Coming to, to, to Parsha Zachar, says Rabbi Yenison, I have you can fulfill the mitzvah of Zachar when each day that you say v'alam al-shinim, you daven for the destruction of Amalek, Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran. And we daven that any bad things, any hard things, any suffering that is destined to befall the Jewish people should instead happen to Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran and the enemies of Israel. If you're looking for the place in Shemona Esrei to be having extra kavana to thwart the intent of our enemies, Valam is that place, and with it, the mitzvah of Zohar.